to my channel. So today, I'm just gonna kind of dive right into my subject just to keep it nice and flowing, I guess. Mm -hmm. So as you can tell from the title, I already lied in my last video about me not really talking about the DLRCP anymore. I totally forgot that I wanted to make videos about the DLRCP, just like basically about my location and like comparing it to Walt Disney World and all that stuff. So this is a video about the DLRCP. So if you are thinking about doing the DCP or you're trying to learn about the DCP and specifically it's the DLRCP, Disneyland Resort College Program, this is the place to be. So with that, I'm just gonna jump right into the video. Okay, so today I'm going to be talking about my role in food and beverage as a cashier. I looked up a lot of videos on quick service food and beverage for the DCP, but I didn't really find anything about cashiering. It was more so like people doing all things all together, if that makes sense. I don't even know, that doesn't, that doesn't make any sense. Okay, I haven't really seen anyone post anything about cashiering and I don't know if it's different for Walt Disney World or Disneyland in general, cause I worked in DCA, but I just thought I would talk about my role specifically. Just, yeah, okay. Let's, I don't even, okay, let's start. So first of all, my role for my last DCP was a food and beverage cashier. I got accepted for a Pixar Pier at Disney California Adventure. Um, so mainly I'm gonna talk about your first days, your training, all that stuff. Really quick, I just wanna put a disclaimer that everything that I'm gonna talk about was my experience being on Pixar Pier at DCA and that's it. This is literally just my role and what I experienced. So, all right, let's go. Okay, I'm gonna be on my little phone here because it's got notes, sorry. The first thing that you have to worry about when you get to your job is socks. I know that sounds funny, but basically this is the first thing you have to worry about before you even go to your job on your very first day. Okay, so after your step into the magic, I don't know if Walt Disney World has step into the magic. Correct me if I'm wrong. I'm pretty sure it's just like one day tradition. Might be wrong, probably am wrong, but for Disneyland you have traditions and then you have step into the magic. I believe it's in that order back to back. And they're both like eight hour long things and it's essentially the same thing. I don't like, I really can't remember what made them different. So essentially you have two days of orientation in Disneyland, so be prepared for that. After your second day, you are going to get your little sheet and it has your training schedule. So they'll give you a little sheet attached to it and it tells you what kind of socks to have. If you're into Disney and the DCP, you probably already know about the sock situation and the shoe situation. I'm pretty sure every role in Disney except like one has to have black shoes and it can be literally anything as long as it's like a solid black shoe. I've seen everything from like bands to like Sketchers to like no brand name shoe. I've seen it all guys. What's nice about food and beverage is that they provide shoes for you Even if you're a cashier you're in that environment you get the shoes so good for you Anyways that little sheet of paper is gonna tell you whether you need black or white socks And um, that is your very first step of being a cast member So it just really depends on your costume and it's so funny because I actually started out with white socks because I was in a skirt And then if I wore pants then I had to wear black socks because it meshed better Also they have to be past your ankle. For some reason you can't have like really low cut ankle socks. I got the really long like third grade socks that I folded down because you know it's whatever, you're at work, who cares. Okay so let's talk about training. So on your little paper it'll tell you where to go, where to meet your trainer, where to park, all that stuff. Usually there's other people who go with you to training or you can just carpool with someone that way you don't get lost or anything. I think I went by myself adulting and then when you get there you meet your trainer sometimes you are in a group I've seen like a group of like five people training and sometimes you're by yourself I've seen a group of just you and the trainer I probably would have been by myself but the person that I was training with missed one of her training days or something so she had to like start over I don't know that's how I ended up with her which was really nice because it probably would have been awkward if it was just me and my trainer just because I'm an awkward person in general not because my trainer was awkward yeah, so you meet your trainer and you basically, they show you everything backstage, where costuming is, where scheduling is, the team center, the nurse's office, I don't know if that's what it's called, but basically all that stuff backstage. And then you go and get your costume. Here's the thing with costumes, Disney sizing is so confusing. It was so awkward getting a costume because I did not know how to pick out my own clothes. My trainer, which was a guy by the way, had to pick out my clothes for me because I had no idea what size I was. And then I was the only one changing, which was awkward because the person that that I was with had already gotten her costume and everything from the last training session she had so um, I was actually like trying on clothes by myself hopefully you get a partner or two because it's super awkward having to like try on clothes by yourself and be like oh yeah like this costume works yeah it was just it was a fun time so after you get your costume that is also when you go and get your shoes if you're in food and beverage if not you should already be in your shoes um 
yeah. Okay, the next thing on my list here. We had to go and take like a little computer exam, basically telling us like what to do. Even though we were cashiering, we still had to know like temps and everything and where to store things and emergencies and all that stuff. So we did like a little exam on there. That's also where we set up the hub and I'll go over that in a little bit. So your trainer will show you how to get to your location backstage because it's actually really confusing. The Disneyland Resort is a very big property. You can get lost really easily. So just uh, stick with your trainer, make sure you ask questions. Okay, so now we're at our location. It's been a very long time since I've trained, obviously. So I actually don't really remember exactly what we did. But what's gonna happen is you're gonna have three days of training. At least that's what I had. So the first two days were closing shifts, starting from like three and going to like 11. And then the third one was a morning shift. So you could learn how to like stock and basically like open the place. They showed us how to stock basically where all the fruits were and where the salads were, where to find cups and all that stuff. And luckily I would like to say that I had a really good trainer, mainly because because my trainer was a lead. Um, so if you're watching this somehow, I really super appreciate you. And I'm sorry I didn't say goodbye on my last day. I could not find you. So your trainer basically tells you everything is. We put everything out. We make sure everything's stocked. Check like the drink stuff. And then on those two nights, you basically clean everything and wipe things down and put stuff away. And then the third day is the opening. So you basically go in and learn how to stock. And then the other thing that we were taught to do was to be a cashier. Because that's our role as a cashier. That's our main role. This means getting your own money. So I don't really know how it is for everywhere else in Disney World, in Disneyland, in Hollywood Land, in DCA. Like, I don't know how it is. But on the pier, we got money. So like if we came in and we were like scheduled to get money or whatever, we would get money. So if I was like cashing, it would be my money. I can't let anyone else on my cash register. And then when I walk away from my cash register, I basically take my money with me. And then yeah, at the end of the night, you had to count everything and then like deposit your profit that you made and you were in charge of your money and that kind of freaked me out a lot mainly because I have never like dealt with money like that before I was never like a cashier or anything before this and so that was a little nerve-wracking I was always afraid that I was gonna return back the wrong change which I have before it happens usually they aren't strict about it they know like you know sometimes you just accidentally give the wrong change back or you count wrong and they have to like recount it for you I think it depends on like your lead and your location so yeah we learned to cash um it took a really long time to go over the register, learn how to use that, you learn how to take coupons, you learn how to take annual passes and all that fancy stuff. They will teach you all that. I don't want to go into too much detail here. And then that's what I meant if you watched my vlogs when I said that they cashed me out late. It's because counting your money at the end took so long for me. For the longest time, it took me like an hour to count all my money at the end. And I know it sounds like dumb, like, oh, you're just counting money, but it was like a process. If you are going into cashiering, you'll learn about that and you'll see what I'm talking about. So really quick, I'm just going to talk about hours. Like I said, it just depends on like your location and like the amount of people staff. For the first like two weeks maybe, I think I only got like four hour shifts. For CPs, you're automatically like um, put higher and so you get more hours. That way you can pay for housing. I gradually got more into like eight, well it, not gradual, but it went into eight hours. So I pretty much got like eight hours, five days a week. That was really nice. Scheduling was super nice only because if you're a CP at the Disneyland Resort, you actually get prioritized. So I think it goes full time and then CPs and then part-time and then seasonal. I know for a fact that in Walt Disney World, um, you're basically at the bottom of the food chain when it comes to scheduling, which I'm kind of freaking out about. But yeah, that is one thing I'm probably gonna miss at Disneyland is that you get um, prioritized. That's why everyone hates you because you're taking all their hours. That's not true, kind of. So when you're training and go and put your preferences in, your trainer will help you figure all that out. You basically get to like prioritize uh, where you wanna work if you have multiple locations, um, when you wanna work, work in terms of days, when you want to work in terms of hours, you just basically get to prioritize all of that and they take it into consideration. And then you have like RDOs and ADOs, which is basically a regular day off and an additional day off. My regular days off were like Wednesdays and Thursdays and it was pretty consistent. They were really good about giving me my days off that I wanted. So like if I wanted a Monday and Tuesday off that week, I would go in and put in for it and then I would have it off and then I would work Wednesday and Thursday. And then I always asked for morning shifts because I preferred morning shifts rather than closing shifts. I hated mid shifts, the ones between like 11 and 7, like those ones sucked so much because you didn't have a day before your shift and you didn't have a day after your shift. So I just like, I hated it. I think the earliest I got off on an eight hour shift was like 4 p.m. That was so nice. So the next thing I'm gonna talk about is cross training. 
basically what cross training is is they have you train for one day only and you basically have a closing shift a trainer comes and trains you for the night and that's it you're ready to go they sign you off it's actually funny my trainer for my cross training actually wasn't a trainer either she was a lead as well I don't know I just got all the leads for my training so so I started at boardwalk pizza and pasta and then they cross trained me for the adorable snowman treats and corn dog castle so basically I got taught how to be there as a cashier mainly but you also do other things too so just like at boardwalk you stock and you clean at adorbs you actually make the ice cream you don't I mean you don't like can turn it or anything but you like swirl it and pass it out and then you like stock and clean and all that stuff and then at corn dog you're basically putting the trays together calling out names and all that it was a lot more fast-paced than it was at boardwalk at first it was a little overwhelming I'm not gonna lie like I was freaked out like I didn't know what to do I was gonna do it wrong but eventually you just kind of get used to it and then it was just it just came natural and you were a pro and I'm a pro swirler not really but I did get people tell me oh this is the best swirl I've ever had that was always like so gratifying to hear and like when people took pictures because we made these pretty things I am so 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 glad that I got signed off because I met so many wonderful people I met the majority of my friends and like the best people that I could have worked with in that last month of my CP and I wish I would have gotten signed off earlier that way I could have hung out with them longer and like gotten to know them better but so definitely cross train if you can so another thing is earning your ears once you earn your ears which is after your four month mark you can actually have full range of the whole part just kidding not really um at this four month mark they basically trust you and they're like okay you can do whatever so you can put in to be cross trained elsewhere you can also apply to transfer location you can ask for a role change basically apply for other things so as a CP I was like great that's awesome but I'm going home so I can't really do that rambled on about nothing. I'm gonna go ahead and wrap this video up here. This was more of like an overview of everything that I did rather than me going into detail about some things. If you want me to go into detail, let me know in the comments or if you have any more questions, let me know there or if you're not sure if I can answer them, you can always DM me on my Instagram and I will answer your question there. That is about it for this video. I'm sorry it was all over the place. I hope that I was able to answer some questions and actually make some complete sentences throughout this whole video. So if you did like today's video, go ahead and hit that like button. Also, if you're not already subscribed, to me go ahead and hit that subscribe button that way you can come along with me and my DCP adventure and then I can ramble at you guys some more but anyways I hope you all have a terrific day and I will see you in the next video bye <laughs>